yellow bows to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we thank you for another day, God. Another day in your presence, Father. Lord, we thank you and we're grateful on tonight, God. We're grateful for our house, God, where we can come and serve you, God. Father, we thank you for the newness, God. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done, God. And we thank you for all that you're going to do, God. Father, we praise your name on tonight, Father. We praise you, God, in all that we do, God. We praise you, God, in all that we say, Father. God, we thank you tonight, Father. Thank you for your manifold blessings, God. Thank you, God, for the teachers and the leaders, God that you have put before us, God. Lord, we thank you for this house right now, God. For it's a blessed house, God. Oh, God, you have made it a blessed house, God. A place where we can come, God, and lay down all the troubles of God. Father, we thank you right now, God. And as we come into your presence right now, God, we rebuke everything that's not like you, Father. Oh, God, in the matchless name of Jesus, God, we bring all minds in, God. All minds, God. We cancel out all thoughts right now, God, that's not like you, Father. And we focus our minds on you, God. On you, Father. We focus our minds on you tonight, God, so that we can hear what thus saith the Lord, Father. Lord, we thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank it now, strange God, that you visit us daily, God that you visit this house, God. We thank you, God. And Father, we pray that you rain down on us again tonight, God. Rain down on us, God. Let your faces rain down on us again tonight, Father. Oh, God, we praise you and we thank you, God. Once again, God, we just want to be thankful on tonight, God. We want to be grateful, God. Grateful for this place, God. Grateful, God, that we can come to you in our time of need, God. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for each and every person, God, that you have brought here tonight, God. And we ask that you touch each and every mind, God, and that you open up every mind, God, that we may be able to receive, God. And we cancel out the plan of the enemy, God. Anything that he might have, God. Or anything that may, uh, God. Or anything that was attached to either one of us tonight, God. We wipe it away. We rebuke it right now, Father. In the master's name of Jesus, God. And Father God, as we go forth, God. As we move forth, God. Oh, God, continue to be with us, God. Oh, God, continue to let your spirit rest and abide, God. And Father God, we ask that you will continue, God, to strengthen our leaders, God, those that you have put before us, God. Oh, God, we thank you right now, God, for the examples that you have put before us, God. Oh, God, let us walk in their ways, God. Oh, Father, oh, God, continue to give them divine guidance, God. Divine guidance, God. Continue to guide their feet, Lord. Oh, God, so that they can continue to guide us, God. Oh, Father, right now, God, we clear out all minds, God. All minds, God, from everything that's not like you, God. And we command, God, each and every mind to come forth right now, God. 
in the matchless name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, we pray, God, that you will continue to reign on us tonight, God. That you will continue to open up our minds, God, and our hearts that we may receive on tonight. In the matchless name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the fire, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for the purifying fire, God. Oh, the fire of God. Oh, God, we thank you for purifying your people. Oh, do it again, Lord. Oh, God, we yield in this place, oh, God. Father, we die to the flesh again. Have your way, Lord. Father, you have your way, God. Roshata, Roshianda Rabasha. God, we thank you, Roshianda Basha, for going down, God, to the core of our being, oh God. Roshiande, Roshanda Rabasha. Oh God, got us out, Ishatabasha. Roshiande, represent us, oh God. Roshata, reinvent us, oh God. Rosha, Roshianda Rashe. In the name of Jesus, Ikabasha, we give you another yes, God. Roshia, Roshiande, Roshiatabasha. Oh God, Yashianda Rabashata. Not our will, Lord, but thine will be done, oh God. Roshianda Rabashata. Father, we thank you for new mindset to Kabosha. God, we thank you for authority and power on tonight. God, stir the hearts of your people. Oh, God, let them see, God, through your lies, oh, God. Let them sense, oh, God, Russia, your heart, oh, God. Oh, God, it's not about us. It's all about your kingdom, God. We thank you for reigning in this house, oh God. We thank you for ruling in this house, oh God. We thank you for abiding in this house, oh God. Oh God, we are your people and you are God. No other God before you, God. Oh God. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Oh, God, have your way. Oh, God, in our minds. Have your way in our heart, oh, God. We open up our heart to you, Lord. Because we trust you, oh God. This time it's different, oh Shabasa. Oh, oh, Shata. This time it's different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a hallelujah. Glory to his name. Oh, Oh, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, I say yes to your will, to your will, God. I say yes to your will, oh God. I say yes to your will, oh God. I say yes to your will, oh God. 
So I sense the Lord moving in this season. He's been trying to show us what he wants for our lives. And as I prayed all day today, the Lord said, tell the people I want their whole heart. And what that means is that what God wants to do, when and how, where, everything about it, it's got to line up with his heart. And when we give God our heart, hallelujah, he has our mind and our desires and everything line up. The struggle is that God is not in our heart, hallelujah. Once he's there, there's no choosing. Everything lines up. Hallelujah. There's no struggle in the will of God. Hallelujah. And so I've been praying for this season. Hallelujah. That God will captivate our entire being. Once he does that, the struggle is gone. Hallelujah. 
So the struggle is not without of you. Outside is on the inside of you. And it doesn't matter what people do against you and who's not on board or whatever going on. When you make that agreement with God in heaven, the one that created you to serve and to worship him, then you understand what true yes. Hallelujah. From the depth of your soul, that's what he said. I want a true yes. Hallelujah. From the depth of your being, he wants a yes. And he asks this question, are you willing to give me that, says the Lord? Are you willing to give me all of you? All of you, not some of you. Hallelujah. He created us. We belong to him anyway. And when we fight against the will of God, we're fighting against God because we, we are created in an image. We belong to him. We are his property. We don't belong to ourselves. So the Lord asks this question. Do you really want him? Because when you desire him, you work for it. I don't know anybody that did not want something bad that did not work after to get it. Hallelujah. To get a degree in college, you got to go to school. To graduate from high school, to from elementary, whatever, you got to work for it. And when something's in your heart and it's in your desire, you work for it. So I remember there was a time in my life where I, I knew the bottom line was that I just did not want God the way he wanted me. And I came to the realization is that I wasn't working because down deep inside of me, something took the place of a pure desire for God. I remember praying the prayer, God, give me the desires of your heart. Father, teach me, place in me what I need to love you the way you deserve to be loved, the way I was created to love you. And for a long season, I prayed that way, and I stayed there. I said, God, I don't care about nobody else, but I know I need to love you the way you love me. I need to know how to love you. So whatever you need to do in me, God, because I know I need to do it, strip me and break me and mold me. Take everything away from me. But I know I need to love you, Lord. Not with some of my heart, but all of my heart. And so when you make that declaration unto God, you say, God, teach me how to love you. That means I have to be willing to let the things go that was in the way of my love for God. And I was willing to let go everything that I needed to let go to love God the way I, I was designed to love you. Do you know that we were all designed to love God? And when you love something over God, you become something that you never thought you would be involuntarily. So these things happen involuntarily when you resist God. So in this season, the month of December is a very vital month for the body of Christ. Very vital. 2017 marks a new era or a new time, a new birthing in the kingdom. And God desires for us to be positioned properly for us to flow. Hallelujah. He wants to pour it out. He wants to spread us out. Hallelujah. But you got to be willing. There's got to be a firm a firm agreement in your spirit that you're going to follow God. Do you have that? Do you have that agreement with God? Have you made up in your mind that you're going to follow God? Like that confession that we make in the beginning. When we receive God as our personal Savior and we come to him for the remission of our sins and we choose to follow him all the way. 
Have you made that decision in your heart? Some of us made it in our mind, but it's not in our heart. And so I'm going to open the altar before we move forward. And if you know that you have not made that decision in your heart to follow God all the way, the altar is open for you. And I'm going to share with you. If it's hard for you to commit to the will of God, whatever God is telling you to do, whether it's getting up praying at a certain time, reading and, and consecrating yourself the way you're supposed to, you have a hard time meeting God's needs. The altar is open for you. There's a struggle. There's a struggle in you. And I know it's there. I know the ones that have it. But the uh, altar call is for the ones that are willing. When you come to the altar, if that means you make a bold statement, a bold statement. See, when you make up in your mind, you make a bold statement. And it doesn't matter about what nobody else thinks. It's a bold statement that I'm willing to make in front of anybody. Like, I, when I, wherever I go, I make a bold statement that I'm saved, that I'm sanctified and full of the Holy Ghost. And I make that statement by the way I keep myself. Hallelujah. God wants all of us. God wants all of us. Oh, God, sovereign God. Father, we make this bold statement before heaven and before your people, Jesus. Father, you call us to yourself. Father, right here, we surrender our will. We surrender our will. We surrender our will all the way. Father, even the reservations that we used to have, we come out of reservation, come out of the reserve. And by the Father, right here, we submit our will right here. We submit God. Even those areas that we don't even, can't even identify, we just know that, Father, there is a hindrance within us. We know that there is a hindrance. We know that there is something that is blocking us from going closer and drawing closer to you. And Father, we can know, we know that this does not mean it's outward, it means it's inward. Father, you created me to worship you, God. You created me to love you, so I know I have the ability by the way of the Holy Ghost to love you the way you deserve to be loved. Father, right here, we repent. We repent. Come on, tell the Lord. We repent, oh God, for not giving you, God, what you had demanded. Oh God, over this season, over this year, you have made a demand for your people to come to you. So, Father, this day we come out of reserve. We come out of reserve. Romandiande sia tokoso. We come out of reserve, we come out of fear, we come out of hurt, we come out of pain, we come out of that memory, we come out of that memory, that painful memory. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we submit our will to you, oh God. We submit our minds to you, oh God, totally. We submit our hearts to you, oh God, totally. We no longer want to resist your will. Oh, your way, oh God. 
We surrender, Jesus. Oh, we surrender. We surrender, Jesus. I surrender, Lord. Oh, I surrender. All of me. All of my hurt. I surrender, Lord, all of me, oh, Jesus, all of me, oh, Jesus, all of me, Jesus, all of me, Jesus. All of me. oh, I surrender. I choose to face my fear in a season. I choose to face the fear. I choose to trample on the enemy in this season. Father, anoint me to face. Come on, Anoint us to face our fear in this season. Anoint us to die to our flesh in this season, Jehovah. Jehovah God. Jehovah, anoint us. Teach us how to worship you, oh God. Teach us how to worship you. Teach us how to worship you, Jesus. With all of my heart. Teach me, Jesus. Come on, Rebel Shire. Teach me, Lord. Oh. Teach me, Jesus. Come on, Rebel Shire. Come on, Rebel Shire. Teach me how to love you, Jesus. Call me. Every part of me, Jesus. Oh, Rebel Shire. Come on, just begin to worship him. Lift those hands. Oh, 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 all of me, Jesus. Shandele mo kosaka. Shetele mo kosi andala la mo kosaka. Hallelujah. Tudele mele mo shandala la la mo kosi. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. All of me. That's it. Come on, Robo Shantaya. Come on, lift those hands. Come on, Robo Shaman. Come on, and you see our Naya. All of me, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Baba Shandara, and I will call Sia Baba Kaya. All of me, oh God, all of me, all of me, all of me, Jesus. All of me, Jesus. All of me, come on, Robo Shaya. Call of me, Jesus. 
Come on, there's a sovereign presence in here. Come on, Robo Shakala. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Robo Shakala. Shiebe Kosia Bakala. Oh, all of me. Come on, Robo. I surrender. I surrender, Jesus. I surrender, Lord. I surrender, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All of me, Jesus. Come on, Robo, shut that. This is your chance to connect. Come on, Robo Shataya. All of me. Oh, Jesus. All of me. All of me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramashandara Loko Sandaya. All of me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramashandara Oh, anoint us, God. Anoint us, anoint us, anoint us, anoint us. All of me. Hallelujah. Shandele Ramakosta. Come on, Robo Shantaya. Oh, come on, Robo Shantaya. Shandela Boko Siyanawa. All of my spirit, Jesus. All of me. All of me. All of me, Jesus. All of me. All of me. All of me, Jesus. All of me. All of me. All of me. All of me, All of me. All of me. All of me. All of me, 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 all of me. All of me, all of me, all 
coming in. This season is very vital. The month of December. It is probably the most vital season that I can, that I've experienced since we've been in church. It's very vital. And my prayer has been is that we will see the things that God are asking for us individually, individually. There is a demand that God has placed on all of us individually. And when we allow God to deal with us individually, we make up the corporate body properly. The hindrance will come corporately because it's a hindrance individually. And if God has ever wanted us, his people, to be positioned properly is this time the whole body of Christ so this dealing is different it's very different and I admonish you under the mercies of God that you adhere to the things that God is asking of you adhere to it that means hear it and obey it most of us have been used to hearing but not obeying. And the Lord also shared with me this is the hour that he's bringing his people out of exile. And many of us don't understand what exile means because we only think that it applies back in the Bible days in the beginning of but exile means that God sees disobedient or rebellious people into a place, a place of discipline or a place of judgment, a place where he is, his, he's placed them. And some people's places may be mental, emotional, physical, or even just wandering, feeling displaced into a place of bondage. And so in our time, biblically, we do not see it as they did because they're back in the Bible days, the people were displaced out of the land, kicked out of the land that God has and not once received them and placed them there and began to bless them. So he moves you out of that place and he, he calls them to run into another a pagan country where they were judged. So nowadays we see people just wandering and we see it inside of the church. We may, one may call it vagabond, one may call it mental or whatever, but it's a displacement, not feeling placed. And I woke up in a dream and the Lord showed me how he's sending the people out bringing them out of the place of judgment or the place of wandering into a fold. And he said, position yourself to receive the exiled ones, the ones that he judged them, he called to be displaced. And there's only one reason why God would allow that to happen, disobedience. Or I'm going to bring it a little closer to some that think you don't know, but you're not able to be steady or rooted and grounded in a job or, or in a home or in your marriage or in a relationship, and, and it's just broken, 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 broken. The cycle is broken, it's broken, it's broken. Displacement, not fitting, nothing's working out. And so there are times where, where there's a cycle of losses that God allows to happen. And then he brings you into a place of healing, take you out of that cycle of that exile place, a place that God is not receiving you. 
that means he allowed you to be rejected at this place and he's not receiving you. A place of wonder and emotion. So in this month, God is healing the exiles, the ones that's inside of the church. Inside the kingdom, there are people that are We must position ourselves first, ready to fix or heal the things that need to be healed. Position ourselves properly so that now that the time we won't miss it and God can go on and heal you and, and, and heal this, whether it's finances or, or your body or your mind or relationship, whatever it is. So my prayer is, is for us to heal. Here are the things that are out of order so we can place them in order that God can heal you. Some of you have been in cycles for years, experiencing loss, losses for years and times of abundance and then all of a sudden it's taken from you. Obedience is the answer. Obedience is the call to you. It's the answer. He is dying. So I admonish you to pray so that you can hear God. And I also come to warn you against when the enemy begin to sense that God is healing you, there will always be a false voice and and you all know I come to you every time that God is shifting like this. And every season I come to you and tell you that whenever God is bringing a healing like this, you have to be careful for the false voice that will come. To try to mislead you in this very vital season. You got to hear. You must discern if the voice that is speaking to you in this hour is of God. The false voice always comes when God is not here. So I pray that your discernment will be keen and accurate. Keen and accurate. And the key is not listening to wounded people hurting people in a season because hurting people cannot give you sound counsel. They can't give you sound counsel because they're trying to live beyond their hurt too. So be very careful for the foreign voice in this hour. Position your ears to hear and your heart to see so that this season will not be lost. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people. Father, I pray that their ears will be in tune to only you, Holy Ghost. Right now, we cancel every, every lie from the enemy, every foreign voice in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, we cancel the wolf that comes in sheep clothing. We silence the accuser of the brethren. We silence every word that will speak contrary to what you're doing in your people's lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that they will discern the voice of the enemy in this hour in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that your strength will be made perfect in the time of weakness, oh God. That you will strengthen the feeble knees in this hour in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to understand that this is a very vital season, oh God, and we will not miss it. We will not miss it in the name of Jesus. We will be positioned, oh God, to move into the new year in the name of Jesus. Father, we rejoice in you now because that means healing and deliverance. Father, you spoke to us months ago and you told us, oh God, that in this hour, God, you are finalizing and you are healing, oh God, and you're bringing closure to the past. Father, we thank you in advance for closing 
doors, oh God. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, that we know that you've destroyed the work of the enemy on Calvary. And Father, it's very vital for us, the body of Christ, that we move in the spirit in this hour. Father, I thank you that the eyes of your people are open. Their ears are open. Their spirits are open. Oh God, to hear no voice but your voice right now. I decree that the voice of the enemy is silent and that the people of God will come to an awareness, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that, God, they will not get weary in their well-doing. Because we will reap and we will not faint. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we praise you in advance, oh God. And we will praise you, oh God. We will praise you for the rest of this season. We will worship and honor you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we just submit now our will. In the name of Jesus. And what I also sense, I want everyone to stand on your feet, if you will. We corporately make a fresh commitment unto you, O oh God, as one body we commit. And we submit corporately to your will and your way. In the name of Jesus, we repent for everything that we've said or done wrong, falling short of your word in any kind of way. Father, we repent. We make a fresh covenant with you. We covenant this house and everything you had committed to the work of our hands, God. We make a fresh covenant. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary. And Father, you had given us the authority and the right to apply it over our lives. We apply the blood of Jesus upon us and upon everything you committed to our hands our families, our children, our spouse, our relationship, our finances, our business, our workplace, everything, our car, our home, everything, oh God, the blood of Jesus. And Father, we decree that no weapon which has been formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for you are healer and you are deliverer. We thank you for what this time represents, oh God. Father, you said this will be the time when you would demonstrate your power through us, your people. So that means, Father, that some of us will go through some things, but we praise you in advance for the things that we go through in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, for we will come out as pure gold and we will get the victory. We thank you in advance for the testimonies that will go into the new year. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. But Father, we understand that this day you, you said, I want a commitment. That's what he said to me. And hear me. He said, I want your heart. I want a commitment and I want your heart. That's what he said to me. I want you 100%. Is all of you or none of you? And so we're willing to give that to God. He deserves it so that we can move forth and he can express himself through our spirit. He wants to express his power. His ways, his heart through us are pure vessel in him and that's it. That is not a shame. That's what he said he wants from us. And we gave him that. 
would take him in. Hallelujah. Now he can do what he needs to do through us. That's all he wants is your heart. In Jesus' name, come on and clap your hands. Oh, I praise the motor bus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, when I think about God, God's need for us, we can't do it unless we submit and yield to him so that he can do it through us. We need him. We need him. There's such a need for holiness in this hour. Holy vessels so that he can pour his self out upon this land. share something with us. We've got to do things God's way. God's way is good. God's way is very vital. a commitment like that, your heart just seems full and joyful. Mm. Joyful. I don't know about you, but I feel like a different person. Amen. <laughs> this last year has move on for greater things. Amen? Greater. Amen. For his glory. Amen. Does anyone have a testimony? Testimony. the Lord. I just thank God tonight. On my way here, a car in front of me stopped and almost
was hitting, hit the bathroom. But as soon as I said, Jesus, hallelujah, all kind of cars stopped and none of them hit me. So oh, God hallelujah. is in control and I just thank him. Thank, thank you, you Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I've been on my job where I'm at for about two years. Um, we just done evaluation, and I'm the low man on the totem pole. So my boss had brought me in the office and done my evaluation, and he said, I'm not supposed to say this, but... Um, out of everyone in the company right now, your increase is higher than those that's been here for, for 10 to 15 years or more. Hallelujah. So I just want to give God the glory and give God the praise because I know it's God. Yeah. I know when you you faithful and you're, you're giving to the Lord and you do as the Lord say, do even when you don't have it to give. Amen. And you sacrifice and give anyway, the Lord always makes up the, the difference. So I say to God be the glory because since I started this job, um, there, there has been warfare on the job, but I have overcame and I've um, been able to endure to see God's hand and strong deliverance in my, in my favor. So I just thank and I praise the Lord just because, you know, out of everybody, I, I, I thought the, the boss, you know, best man would have been the one who got the highest on anything because, I mean, he's the one, he's the go-to person. But when he told me that, he said, I just want to tell you, he said, I could have manipulated it, I could have changed it, but he said, God said, don't do it. Hallelujah. He said, he said, now I can't do nothing about with the, the boss over me may do. He said, but when I when he sat me down, he said, I looked at it again. He said, and the numbers hasn't changed. He said, you're going to get everything that I told you you was going to get in some. So I just give God the glory Hallelujah. for everything. Praise the Lord. My testimony is, and God says, get up and, and, and tell this testimony that, <laughs> amen. In the past year, since, I, since I've been at Forever Praise, God has taken so many things away from me, things that I was bound with that I didn't even know, I didn't think I, there was a chance that I could ever stop doing the things that I was doing. But God put it in me to surrender it to him. And once I surrendered those things to him, God, I, I, had to, I had to want to stop doing it. I, had, I, I wanted to stop. I said, God, please take this away from me no more. And when I did that, God took it away. So my testimony is that if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you too. Amen. Apostle Tony opened the floor for testimonies and there was an immediately a line of 50 people. You know, God tugged on my heart and said, now's the time. Um, so, God did something really miraculous in my life recently. Um, it's been uh, maybe a couple months. You may have seen me strolling in here. I was like this big. I was 14 weeks pregnant and I didn't desire another child at that time, but I'm just really learning to trust God. And I don't have it all together, but I'm learning as I continue walking with him. So I said, okay, God, I guess I got to roll with it, you know. I was believing for a girl. I said, okay, God, this is your will. I'm going to believe you to provide. 
you got me. I trust you, God. I'm going to walk through this thing. And it was very difficult from the very beginning. I was very sick. And at this point, you know, I'm no longer pregnant. I had a miscarriage, and God just totally shifted it. And I said, okay, God, that's not your will, okay? Okay. And said you had a, what they say, a molar pregnancy where no baby actually formed. I said, okay, God. They said this happens. You had a 1 in 1,500 pregnancy. I said, okay, God, I'm the one, okay. You know, so even as I was in a hospital, I'm like, wow, I know he's about to give me bad news. I got the ultrasound. Um, all I knew was it was going to be something bad in the sense that it was something wrong. You know, God was preparing me. So I just want to give God the glory to say I never would have thought. I've never had a miscarriage, never been through anything like that. God has blessed me to have, you know, three healthy children. I'm so honored. And I just bless God for healing me because even in my emotions, as I embraced his will from the beginning, and I surrendered to him when it turned out to not be what I thought it was. I said, okay, God, you got something else in store. You know, at a later time, I'm believing you, you know, for a girl. When you, when you see fit, this ain't the time. And I just totally yielded. So where people would be, you know, like depressed and really in their emotions about going through something like that, I truly didn't experience any sort of sorrow except to say, you know what, God, I was looking forward to this thing. I was embracing it. But okay, God, now I got more energy for my three boys, you know. And it's hard being a mom, you know. For me, it is. It takes everything in me to maintain it all and to still, you know, strive to keep God first. So I just want to give God glory because he truly healed my emotions throughout that. So my testimony is he'll keep you if you want to be kept and if you just yield no matter what it is, no matter how it may flip and turn. God knows the end from the beginning. You know, he knew my end. I didn't know. I was going through the journey like, okay, God. You know, even through the sickness, I've been in school, I was struggling, just doing my best to just keep it all together. And now I see it as he removed the burden from me that he didn't want me to carry, so I'm rejoicing. So I give God the glory for the opportunity to even share this with you, be encouraged that whatever you're going through, he got you. You may not know the end, but he knows and just trust him. He got you. Amen. Let's give God some glory. You know, he's truly been good to us. Um, my testimony comes in um, a different way. Um, my coworker um, was quite upset, and I knew he was upset. I said, hey, man, what's going on? You know, what's, what's happening? You know, you're a little different today. And he said to me, he said, man, he said, they took my thyroid, and he said, my kidney is like in the tubule. And I said, man, well, you know, with that being said, you know, God can do anything. He said, well, the doctor said I only have this much to live, and I only have this and that. I said, well, wait a minute. I said, the doctor said that. I said, surely if God can split the Red Sea, he can heal you and heal your problem. He looked at me, kind of smiled a little bit. He said, yeah, I know. I said, no, no, no. I said, there's no you know. I said, God can do this. And I asked him, I said, man, listen here. When the last time you talked to the Lord? Be honest with him. I said, maybe God is trying to get your attention. I said, have you talked to him? Have you asked him to heal you? He said, no. I said, well, do you want to be healed? He said, yeah. I said, okay. I said, I'll tell you what. Step over here right now. We, we're going to pray. We're at work now. I could get in trouble for this. But God is speaking to my heart, and I want to do the right thing. I prayed with the young man, talked to him. He said, I feel better already. I said, no, man. What you need to do is talk to God tonight. You ask him to heal your body. You ask him to do something that's easy for him but hard for us. I said, you're going to be all right. You're going to make it. I didn't see him for a couple days. Today he came into work. I said, man, hey, man, how you doing? He said, I'm doing all right. I said, where you been? He said, oh, well, I had to go get a checkup. I said, okay. I said, well, what did they find? I said, what's going on? What did they find? I said, you seem a little better today. 
she said, man, they went in and they couldn't find nothing. Hallelujah. I said, well, did, did you talk to God last night? She said, I've been talking to him all morning. I said, well, praise God. I said, you know, you're going to be all right. But on another end, there was a gentleman that's been working for my company for 25 years. He's been walking around. He was kind of quiet. You know. And I said, hey, Bob, I said, how you been doing? Bob said, well, I've been doing all right. I said, how was your Thanksgiving? He said, it was pretty good. You know, I said, well, you got a chance to see some. He said, I got a chance to see some family members that I didn't see. He said, but my surgery went all right. He said, but I'm doing okay. Well, Bob had a heart attack. You know, Bob had a heart attack. Um, today is Friday, Thursday night. This morning, Bob passed. And his wife came to the job to get his belongings family members was with them and they were all giving her gifts and telling her how sorry they was and this and that and she's a very strong woman so I guess she already kind of knew and she just came up and she just said I want to thank everyone for praying for my husband she said he's no longer with us So I say that to say this. We don't know what God is doing. We don't know our time. We don't know what. Do not take for granted the blessings that God gives you each and every day. We own borrowed time. When God tells you something and he gives you something, even if you don't understand it, do it. He has your back all the way so I told the lady I didn't know what to tell her but I just told her that God's got you in this situation you may not understand but God's got you she, she thanked me and she said it is well it is well with me and it is well with our family and on another note the Lord gave me a dollar raise hallelujah so praise God. Be Amen. encouraged. Amen. Praise God, saints. Hallelujah. Praise God, saints. Hallelujah. Ooh, this is kind of hard because I don't usually have a testimony. I have one. I probably just was scared to tell it. But this one really happened since Tuesday after Mama told us we had to sit down for 21 days and get our life together closer to God, and what it is, is I'm a bus driver, you know, part-time school bus driver, and I've been at this job now on, going on three years, and when I first started, I had a good route. I came in and went right to a route. We usually don't do that. We, we become a sub first. We do everybody route. But this one, I went right in and got a route, and I had a route with the high kids, the high school kids, and, you know, they not me in trouble, so... After a while, they had a meeting saying that, you know, a lady wanted to bid for my route. And she, she was dealing with the little kids. And she, nobody really wanted to do these little kids. It started out from kindergarten, first graders, second graders, and third graders. And then the second one, it goes from fourth grader, fifth grader, sixth grader, seventh grader. Them kids is off the chains, believe me. On a the bus, <laughs> they are terrible. So she outbid me because she had more seniority than I had. They gave it to me. And for the last almost year and a half, I've been saying, why, God, why? Why did I get this bad route? You know, I'm fussing and hollering and screaming every day and every evening, you know, and then even fighting the parents. So, you know, that's just Tuesday. You know, I said, God, you know, Mom, right, I need to get closer to you. I got to start searching more for you. And I said, God, I want all of you. I, I, I want all of you. I need your help. I can't do it anymore myself. So 
On my route, I have, out of all the kids, I have about 62 kids, rides on my bus in both groups, and I got the biggest route. So you can imagine 62 little kids <laughs> hollering, screaming, jumping over seats, crawling up under seats, and I'm trying to tell them to get back in their seats and drive this big old bus. And uh, they don't give me no monitor. I got to do it all myself. So, and I got four real bad ones, real bad ones. And I got them sitting right behind my seat. And I'm telling sit back, get down, sit down, get off your seat. And uh, then they go and I, you know, we write them up. If they do stuff wrong, we write them up. And then they take, send it to the principal. And then they suspend them for a couple of days. And these four kids, I just in this year started, I done wrote them up at least 10 times. They done been suspended at least twice. But God finally told me, like they say, that popcorn finally popped. He said, Greg, these not no bad kids. These kids are lonely. They don't have any love at home. They don't have nobody to grab them and hug them and just be, you know, just understand them. So I said, okay, God, I'm going to try it. So Wednesday, I took these four little kids and, uh, the person I take a note is is Ron. He used to go to Planet Fitness. They have these little tissue rolls and these little grape things that you get when you go out. So I grabbed a whole handful of both of them and put them in my pocket. So I went on a bus and I gave them a couple of them. They don't. They can't even get along with each other. The four, two of them is brothers, and they can't even get along. So I gave them candy and stuff, and we all started talking and stuff. And this one boy, he is really the worst. His name is Don Jones. Not trying to call no names, so. This boy stands up on the bus when I'm driving. He had, we had to give that boy a separate seat to himself. And then he said he had to be the first one off the bus. And then now, the problem before it's recent, he was just talking about little girls sitting behind him, just whispering. He would turn around and tell them to shut up. You in my space. And I kept telling him, uh-uh, this is God's space. Everybody can do this and stuff. But make it look, look, look shorter now. I get to the punchline. I start loving on them kids. I start hugging them. And now, the last four days, three days, they've been the best kids on my bus. Because I showed them some love. And been talking to them. Amen. Um, this is just something real quick. It actually just revealed to me just now. Um, I know throughout Bible study on Tuesday that we have the 21 days, you know, to line yourself right, line, well, line yourself up and get right with God. Um, and basically turn your eyes inward. And so I've done little things different. It's been for the past few weeks, maybe a month or two, uh, definitely since Tuesday, since, you know, I've been at the altar. It's been a lot of intense situations going on, but especially today, um, you know, I, my emotions was thrown everywhere. Uh, just, just ever since Tuesday, my emotions just been just trying to figure out on how to fix things and just not really, you know, understanding how to go about things. You know, how, you know, lately over a month, I've been praying on just basically doing what my instructions have been told me to do, which is one of them is, the main one is yielding and just believing in God. But a lot of situations have occurred uh, since October, mainly last month. Long story short, you know, I prayed to God and asked for instructions on how and what, um, you know, asking in a way to reveal it to me in a way that I can understand and know that it's actually you speaking or showing me. So as, you know, Apostle Tony uh, asked for testimonies, I can say that everything that I pray for, I heard through every testimony or instruction on what to do, you know, just in general with situations, and especially after the altar, I can hear basically my answers to most of my prayers or basically what I need, not just everything that I want to hear, you know, everything, like every question, but it's, it's purposely what I needed to hear so I can know what to do. And I'm pretty much sure everything else will come along when it's supposed to, but the key things I heard from 
every testimony tonight basically answered the, basically settled my confusion in my spirit today from asking for all this week and the past month. So I'm, that is my testimony for tonight. But these testimonies is key on to what I need Amen. on top of what Apostle Kenny told me. So thank you all. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Um, at first, I thought it would only be like one person or two people, but um, so pretty much people covered it. But um, I just want to give God glory. Like, I, I mean, if, if you ever had that feeling when you just ready to like bust with confetti, like that's how I feel right now because God just been so like awesome, like in every area of my life. I can't even begin to explain how he has had everything covered. And I'm, I'm just so grateful to him because a year ago at this time, I was like new here, but I was a chronic backslider. And it was like, I would be so good. I would, you know, go into this and do this and be so on fire for God. But then over time, sometimes it was months, sometimes it was years, I was kind of gradually, you know, chronically thin. And I couldn't understand why, like I was so defeated by the time I came here. And even in the times where I was serving him, it still wasn't the same. It was more like a routine. I know what we have to do. I still felt him and everything. He still did miracles and stuff. But it was something that it, it just wasn't quite how it feels now. So I thank God for deliverance and healing, not only in my mind, but just everything, like every area. I feel like I actually know him for the first Hallelujah. time. And I thank him because things when prayers go up, like the faith, I mean, it's just amazing. Like I had a gas leak in my house, like just this week. I didn't even know, but it was like smelling like gas every time I walked in there. And it's just, oh my gosh, like he even moved in that area because I like call Duke and everything else. And I had to pray. I'm like, God, I need a supernatural healing in a pipeline because we had already got it fixed like over a day and then out of hot water and stuff. And a Duke Energy guy came, and he was looking all sorrowful, shaking his head, like, mm-mm, it's not looking good. Like, I'm going to have to call somebody again. And I'm like, the devil is a liar. I'm asking God, I'm like, God, I know you can move something in those pipes. I mean, you supernatural. And he did it. He did it, like, that day. And I, I was shocked. You know, I'm just saying stuff in the atmosphere, like, God, I know you can do this. But he do it just because he's God. And then I had my brother come like, hey, you need to check out one of my plugs. And he checked out this other one. It was like melting. And he was saying, you need to take this to church. It's like actually in my bathroom because I forgot it. But he said, you need to take this because if these wires would just move just like a millimeter difference, he said the house would have blew up. I was like, huh? He was like, you didn't notice that the plug was totally burnt? I said, no, I didn't. I don't look at down there. I mean, who looks at every plug in a wall every day? I don't, but God did, and God did not let us blow up. So I thank God for that. Sorry, my son's like slipping off. I thank God for my daughter, you know, my oldest daughter. She was running away, just moving out of state. You know, God restored her and brought her back. She was sending me messages like, hey, you know, you might as well forget about me. I don't have a soul, you know, all of this stuff. But I'm like, no, I went over there and I started praying, and God, God moved, and he we reached all the way out there in Virginia, brought her back to Cincinnati. Now she's at my house. And then first she had came, and she left, and she was coming and leaving, but now she's there because God will not let her go because of the prayers. So I'm thankful to God. Like, it's so many different testimonies, but God is awesome, so I'm just giving him glory because if he can do it for me and do it for everybody else who was on the mic, you know, if he can do all of that, he can do it for anybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So um, <clears throat> my testimony is a little different also. Um, I just wanted to give God glory through the process of my whole testimony that will come. But um, God has been reminding me of his sovereignty and that... <clears throat> I'm limited in my own power, and so I have to trust God, and I just want to share about a month ago, <clears throat> um, my 13-year-old daughter was 
riding her bike to school, and it was dark outside, and um, she went to drive ride across the street, and the car that was coming to turn didn't see her, and, they, and it hit her, and she called me and said, Mom, I need you to come get me. Somebody hit me with a car, and I'm like all over the place. I didn't even put my clothes on. I hopped in the car, and I couldn't even get my phone. The car was trying to call my mom. I called Apostle, and I couldn't even, <laughs> I felt like I couldn't talk. But when I got there, she was fine. She, you know, she was like, sitting on the ground. She was sore. She had some bruises. But she was fine. And then when you, it was dark outside, and he didn't see her. And I'm like, wow, God, before she walked out the door, I prayed against accident with her and riding her bike. And although the situation happened, the outcome was not what it could have been. He didn't roll over her. Her bike is still rideable. And so I praise God because it just reminded me that he is in control. That, that any way I try to work my hand, it's, it's nothing compared to God's sovereignty. There is nothing that I can do in my own might and my own power but I have to truly trust and rely on God. And I'm still working through some things. And, and I believe God is in the midst of some things. But I wanted to give him glory and praise him. Because in spite of what situations and circumstances look like, my life belongs to God. And so I just wanted to give him glory. Amen. season and the natural eye you would say has been too worse but in spiritual sense I can say it's been one of the best seasons of my life because I've grown I've seen myself I've seen things even recently like ooh, Jesus like Lord okay thank you for showing me me in the midst of everything when I was growing up, I was so attached to my parents and the people who said, oh, like, she going to lose it, she going to this, she going to do that. But ain't none of that happening. I'm standing here today, you know, after losing my mother, my father, and losing my mother seven months later, because of God's grace and his mercy and his keeping power. He'll keep you if you want to be kept. Yes, it has been a trying time. Yes, you know, I've had moments where I just wanted to just be like, forget all of that. But God, that's all I can say, but God. And I thank you all for praying for me and keeping me covered during this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I, I have to give this testimony. Um, when I first started working for this one company, um, the salary was very low. And um, I talked to Elder Janae, and Elder Janae was telling me, you need to go to another company. But I was so attached to my clients. I stayed a long time with the other company. And so finally I said, God, just let me know when you want me to go to the other company. Because I didn't want to leave my clients. Because I love them and they love me. But it still wasn't enough for me to eat go to church, pay my tithes. And I really got tired of being poor. So I went to the other company. And then I started working two jobs. I was working for that company and I was working for the new company because I still couldn't leave the clients. So finally, 
one day I gave my other company a, my uh, letter of resignation and I joined the other company, Assistant Ham. Man, I'm telling you about God. Hallelujah! Oh my God! At the first time when I said, okay, God, I'm going to do it full time, because they kept telling me, they said, Rowena, go with this company full time. I said, no, I don't want to do it. I'm going to just do it part time. I'm just going to part time. She said, no, go full time. Finally, I went full time. Let me tell you about these people and how God just smacked me with an increase. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Apostle kept saying, increase, increase, increase. I never in my life, and I'm in my 60s, never have I made the money, Hashilo, that I make now, never in my life. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I did this one shift the first time I went full time. They called me. They said, Rowena, we want you to go to someplace. Lord, they got me going all over Cincinnati and Kentucky. Oh, my God. But they paid twenty dollars an hour for twelve hours. I never got. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. And one time they paid me fifty dollars an hour to go pick up somebody, oh glory, from a hospital and take them home. That's all. That's all I had to do. I'm just telling you what God will do. I'm Jesus. Jesus. This is a blessed house. I don't have to worry about being hungry no more. Working, oh my God. I, it's, I'm telling you, it's like a dream come true. I'm telling you. Sure, there's issues and problems. You know, that's the part of a job. You know, trying to get to church and they want you to work all the time. I got to get with them. <laughs> I told them. Honey, that's it. I got to be at church when God tell me to. So we still trying to straighten that stuff out. But anyway, financially speaking, I'm better off now than I've ever been in my whole life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for his divine mercy and divine protection. Amen. We all know what happened to the Ohio State University this Monday. And my daughter, you know, that's where she goes for college. And she was here for Thanksgiving. But that Monday, that's when she went back to college. And that's when um, initially they thought it was a, an active shooter going around the campus shooting on people. But I want to thank God because the entire time everything was happening, Rumbizai was asleep in her dorm, fast asleep. And everything was happening next to the street that is to her dome. That's when every, everything was happening. But she was fast asleep the entire time. She had uh, canceled her class that she had around that time when it happened. So I thank God for discernment and I thank God for prayers of protection. And the time that um, the shelters were lifted off when they sent us that message, that's when um, she woke up and to see all the phone calls, the missed calls, because everybody were blowing her phone because we didn't know what was going on with her. She was not responding to our calls or to her friends' calls. So, you know, we were getting worried. But I thank God because the entire time it happened, she was knocked out asleep. And the apostle said, that must be the Holy Ghost <laughs> keeping her fast asleep. Amen. So I thank God because she was protected from the trauma. You know when you experience such things, the trauma, the experience of it, the pain, you know, the anxiety, you know, being at campus like that. So, but she had no experience or exposure of all that stuff. So, I thank God for divine protection. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise for who you are. You're such an awesome God. Father, we praise you for everything that you're doing in the life of your people. Father, as we leave this place, Lord, never from your presence. Keep our hearts, oh God. Continue to do the things that you desire to do in us, oh God. Until the appointed time, you are dismissed. Hug and love your neighbor. 
Tomorrow we will have our women's fellowship.